Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good day, viewers all across the world. And welcome to the daily devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. The Daily Fountain, today being the 25th of February, which is Thursday. Can we pray? Almighty and everlasting Father, we are grateful that you have given us this opportunity to come before your presence. What a wonderful day to be blessed by you. We pray that, Lord, as we hear your word, may we be strengthened, may we be blessed, may we be nourished, may we be encouraged, may we be taught that which we need to know, that your name and only your name be honored and be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The topic of our discussion today is the narrow gate. Our scriptural passage is taken from the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 7. I will be taken from verses 13 to 14. It reads, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. May God bless his words in our lives this morning in the name of Jesus. In life... Good things are often difficult to get. Gold, silver, and other precious metals are mined deep down from the earth and must pass through fire to be refined for use. In the scriptural passage we read, Jesus encouraged each and every one of us, he said, Enter by the narrow gate. He was saying it to his disciples and those listening to him. Broad or wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Many are the people who go in by it. In the passage read, it is an admonition of Jesus Christ, or permit me to say an instruction of Jesus to his disciples and to everyone listening to him, advising that everyone should enter by the narrow gate that leads to life. He went for that to say, the way that leads to life is not just narrow, but also difficult. But even though it is difficult, he encourages us to go through because it is the best way to follow. He helps us to understand that it is only few people that go through this narrow gate. Why did Jesus say only few find it? The gate is narrow. That is one thing we need to know. And why few people go through it? The gate is narrow. Ordinarily, any gate that is narrow, not many people will be willing to follow through it. Secondly, the way is difficult. Again, by this adjective, difficult, the way cannot be attractive and cannot be populated by people. The decision to go, to give one's heart to Jesus, in itself 
is difficult. Making difficult choices and doing difficult things for God is not just easy. And these are the reasons why going through the narrow gate is difficult and is hard. In Luke chapter 13, verse 24 says, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able. Again, Jesus is saying there that we should strive to enter this narrow gate. Even though it is difficult. Even though it is hard. But his encouragement is we should strive to enter through the narrow gate. In Lucan narrative, Jesus is calling on everyone to strive to enter. Because a time will come when you will want to go in, but you will not be allowed. Or when one will want to go in, he or she may not be allowed. Why? Because in this life, not everyone is determined, zealous, consistent to go through the narrow gate. No one or few are determined to go through the narrow gate. So when we look at verse 28 of Luke chapter 13, says, those who miss the kingdom shall experience weeping, gnashing of teeth. That is not my prayer for any of us. Anyone that will, at the end of the, the day, end in hellfire will not be the best option. And so Jesus is advising us and is encouraging us. Despite the difficulties, despite the hardship of going through the narrow gate, he still advises us to go through the narrow gate. It is difficult because it's not easy to accept Jesus. The decision to accept Jesus is not a decision that everyone easily take. The choices to make in order to please God is not the choice that everyone is ever ready or willing to go through. Except those who are determined, those who are willing to go to Jesus, those who are willing to go to God, those who are willing to be saved at the end of the day or at the end of our race here on earth. So Jesus is encouraging us. As I say to you, my view, uh, viewers, that Jesus is advising us, come through the narrow gate, for this is the gate that leads to life. This is the gate that leads to eternal life. This is the gate that leads to the kingdom of God. Anything short of that is not and will not Take once to the kingdom of God. Jesus said to us in Matthew where we read, chapter 7, verse 13. He said, wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And mostly, people of this generation desire to go through that wide gate. Because the desire of the people of this generation is to make world easily is to be involved in one form of atrocities or the other. Is to be involved in one type, one form of sin or the other. Jesus is advising us. According to his word, let us go through the narrow gate because that is the gate that can give us eternal life. The wide gate leads to destruction. And I advise every one of us listening that the invitation of Jesus is to every one of us, let us strive to go through the narrow gate because that is the gate that leads to eternal life. Those who miss the kingdom shall experience weeping. Verse 28 of Luke 13. A gnashing of teeth. I'm sure you wouldn't want to find yourself there. You wouldn't want your enemy to find himself in hellfire. Make haste while the sun shines. Accept Jesus' invitation. 
and it shall be well with you. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 encourages us that the pathway requires effort and focus to enter, not allowing any distractions. Our eyes being focused on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. I implore you, brothers and sisters, as you desire and take the decision to go with the Lord, I plead with you that your eyes be focused on Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. And I'm sure he will keep you to the end. Although we live in the world, but we are not part of the world. John chapter 17, verses 11 and 16. Help us to understand that though we live in this world, but we are not of the world. And so our attention should be focused on Jesus. Our eyes should be focused on Jesus. So that we can be able to win the race. In the war, one shall face tribulation. But the scriptures encourage us, be of good cheers, for Jesus has overcome the world. And so, as you listen to me, I encourage you this morning, brothers, let us encourage ourselves in the Lord that the grace we have is in Christ to be able to run the race and to be able to focus in him. Our victory is coming from the Lord. Because Jesus has overcome the world, he has given us the victory, and upon the victory of Jesus, we are triumphantly joining in this life. I remind every one of us, remember, only those who endure to the end shall be saved. If you endure to the end, you shall be saved. I encourage you, endure. You may be going through pain. You may be going through difficulties. You may be going through challenges. You may be nicknamed as a child of God. Whatsoever kind of challenge you are going through, I encourage you, endure till the end. When you endure till the end, you will enjoy the favor and the grace of God. It is my prayer to every one of us that the Lord will bless us as we enjoy and endure in this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and honor, Lord, as you minister your word to us. As we go out there, we will endure all kinds of challenges. We will endure all kinds of tribulations. We will endure all kinds of problems. But we know that at the end, we will inherit the kingdom of God. Fill us with your grace and power to endure tribulations. In Jesus' name, amen. Timber Lockwood Preservative surpasses all preventive measures designed to permanently prevent the damage and quality reduction of wood and wood-based materials by termites, fungi, bacteria, and other boring insects. Use Timber Lock Premium Wood Preservative to prevent, correct, and defend wood and wood materials against deformities caused by termites and other insects in the later days. Timberlock is designed to solve wood preservation challenges with a standard you can trust. Timberlock Wood Preservative kills termites instantly. Timberlock Wood Preservative, the wood preservative brand leader in Africa. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.